Hello, hello. Oh, let's put the microphone on, shall we? That's going to help you to uh, hear me much better. <laughs> oh, good Lord. I amuse myself sometimes. Got everything set up and no microphone. <laughs> Hello, 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 and welcome everybody to Lunch and Learn Live. I'm Jo Martin, the founder of One of Many, and if, if this is the first time that we have met, hello, how are you? Where in the world are you? And my always question, what's for lunch? <laughs> so as you arrive, do let me know in the comments on the video, say hi, give me a little thumbs up, send me some love, let me know that you're there. How's your day going? It's a beautiful sunny day in the Cotswolds where I am. I love it here. And today is one of those days where the the green, the spring green is effervescent. You know, it's like it's um, not effervescent. That's the wrong, quite the wrong thing. But you know what I mean. It's, um, it's, let's get rid of that. It's um, luminescent. That's the word. It's absolutely luminescent. And, uh, and the sun is shining. Everything's stunning. Had some nice rice and veggies for lunch. What's going on at your end? What are you eating? Where are you in the world? Let me know in the comments section because today we are going to be talking about something which I know you're going to love. And it's a little something, something we call the disempowering archetypes. Because let's face it, most of the time, or at least some of the time, depending on how exhausted you might be, at least some of the time you're awesome. You're actually fabulous. You like you, people like you, you're great to be around, you're happy, fun, relaxed, serene, whatever your particular brand of awesome is. But then sometimes we're less than awesome. You know, sometimes we're less than awesome and we get passive aggressive with our work colleagues or we get bitchy and snappy at our kids, you know, and turn into shouty mama. Or we get, oh my God, it's all too hard and the world's awful and we want to curl up under a duvet and hide from the whole world. Or we spend our time tearing around, trying to take care of everybody else and getting more and more resentful because the little fuckers never say thank you, right? Uh, can anybody relate to this, my darlings? Can anybody relate? This is where we get into disempowering patterns of behavior. And here at One of Many, we call them the disempowering archetypes. And I want to have a chat about them today in a little more detail than I have chatted about them uh, here on Facebook Lives before. In fact, I haven't really spoken about the disempowering uh, archetypes here on Facebook before. So we're going to have a chat about that today. We're going to talk about why it's important to understand them, what they are, how we get into them, why is it that we get into them, what is going on inside of us when, when we go into these disempowering states of mind, and what the hell can we do to change it? Because I don't know about you, but I don't like being less than my best self. <clears throat> and if I can be really straight with you all, oh my God, I'm right up against my ugliest, awful self at the moment. Um, I am a student just like you, and I am always looking for more growth and more expansion. Um, and I'm in one of those phases of my life at the moment, which has been going on for, I don't know, period of time, maybe the last six months or so, culminating recent, uh, recently, um, where I have all of the things coming up to be dealt with at the same time. And I have to admit that over the last period of time, I've been in disempowering archetypes more than I am comfortable with. So I am not immune to this. Just because I teach this stuff doesn't mean that I, get, I am perfect at it. I am not yet the Dalai Lama. I am not enlightened. I am not some ascended master. I am not even a guru. All I am is a kid just like you on this journey trying to figure the fucking thing out and do my very best to be the best version of myself when life keeps throwing us curveballs. Can you relate? Let me know with a little thumbs up or a little... I don't know, some uh, reassurance in the comment section that you can relate, right? Um, good to see you all, everybody who's arriving. Hello. Simone is in Piccadilly Circus in good old London town. Good to see you, my darling. Louise is having chicken salad uh, in sunny Cambridge here for her lunch. Mahala Beckett in bonnie sunny Scotland having soup for lunch today. Fabulous. My mama bear. Hello, mummy. How are you? Good to see you. She's in Lewisham, Tasmania, Australia, with recovering broken ankles and probably uh, had dinner a little while ago. And my guess it was 
sausages, mash and veg. I don't know. What, how close am I, mum? <laughs> Cecilia says, hey there. Rebecca says, hi, good to see you all, darling. So as you arrive, let me know in the comments section where in the world you are and what is for lunch, because I always like to hear that to live vicariously through you people who can eat all sorts of fabulous foods while my tummy allows me not to. Katerina is in Yorkshire with a rainbow. Yay. Good to see you, darling. The next question I have for you is, do you do these patterns of disempowerment? How many times have you experienced in, say, the recent week or two weeks, moments where you've been disempowered. Maybe you were happy to share one with us here. And remember, yes, this is public Facebook. Not everybody likes to share their most innermost secrets uh, in the world publicly, like I kind of tend to do. Um, I really get that. But maybe you've had a moment where you got, you know, shouty with a sister or you got, um, you know, you found yourself doing the martyr energy and and really sacrificing and suddenly get seethingly resentful of the fact that your partner isn't helping out and or maybe something like that's happened in the last week or so. What kind of disempowering patterns of behavior are you doing? Like, let's, let's hear some examples. If you're, if you're happy to share in the comment section with an example, that'd be awesome. Because what I want us to do is to start to understand these, why we do them and what we can do about it. Awesome. Hello to everyone. Oh, I was pretty close with mum's uh, dinner. It was curried sausages. <laughs> pretty close. Fiona's having cottage cheese and smoked salmon for lunch in Winchester. Roz loves that my mummy is here. I love that my mummy is here. And she's having a hot cross bun for lunch in Malvern. Mmm. Ooh. Sinead is in Aberdeen eating tatty curry. Tatty curry. Is that like potato? Potato curry? Um, Simone says, I feel like my disempowerment happens daily. Yeah, look, really. And you're not alone, right? Because let's kind of take, take it back over the last 18 months or so, ladies. We were having a pretty challenging time, certainly here in the UK, politically, from about October 20, uh, 2019. Uh, we had some general elections. There was a whole heap of shit that went on. We didn't like it. Brexit, blah. Then, you know, COVID, the whole world. And it, it was horrendous. And it's impacted women more than men. Most of us went into it already in patterns of disempowerment. And then we added to that... Uh, less sleep, more stress, more fear, more panic, more guilt, you know, more having to juggle, less replenishment time or no um, social contact. So we are really, as I think, uh, you know, I think humanity is really kidding itself if we think we're actually okay at the moment. So I think it's one of those times where if we want to rise up, if we want to be um, impactful in the world, to be able to change our own personal situation or to be able to actually impact our communities or indeed impact the world that is causing, the cultural paradigm that is causing so much of this disempowerment, then we need to really understand what's going on at a deep inner level and do this inner work. And that's that's what we're about here at One of Many, which is why, um, as many of you know, and you might be coming, oh, let me know in the comments, actually, who's coming to the One Woman Conference this weekend? We are running our annual One Woman Conference. It's happening online, virtually. We are going to be live streaming with a live interactive experience out of Stafford here in the UK, which I'm very excited about, talking to the set designer today. Um, we're getting it all set up. The crew are all coming in. We're going to be supporting you out of this great little TV studio up there. And uh, we have 900, over 900 women, I think, registered for the One Woman Conference today, which is super exciting, uh, which means there are still a few tickets available. So if you would like to come and join us and you want to do this inner work, you want to get back into empowerment to find your courage get back to center to feel good about yourself again and be able to start rising into the sort of woman you know yourself to be. Get thyself to the One Woman Conference this weekend. You can get a ticket at onewomanconference.co.uk. That's onewomanconference.co.uk. <laughs> um, and uh, if you can't make the whole thing, make sure you get yourself a premiere ticket so you can get the recordings to catch up afterwards. When you get the premiere ticket, you also get a coaching session with me, a group coaching session um, uh, over one of the lunch breaks. You get our Be Fruitful program to help you find five hours of extra time every week. It's going to be fantastic. 
So if you're not already registered, come, come, come. Yay. Uh, Katarina says, I'm coming to my first OWC, but I'm dabbling in a dermatology conference at the same time. Oh, Katarina, I tell you, if you spend a bit of time with us, you won't be getting much of that dermatology conference come, uh, um, underway. We're much more exciting. <laughs> We're going to be meeting each other and networking in breakout rooms. It's going to be fantastic. You're going to make a whole lot of new friends. It's going to be fabulous. Rose is coming to cruise. She's going to be there as one of our Zoom hosts. Can't wait to see everyone. Fantastic. Raw is going to be awesome. My mum is coming. Yay. Uh, Rebecca says, I gifted my ticket to a good friend as I can't make it and I'm very excited for her. Yay. It's going to be fantastic, ladies. So welcome to One Woman Conference, those of you who are coming. If you haven't got a ticket, go get one. But let's now talk about the disempowering archetypes. What are they? Why do we do them? And what the hell can we do about it? So... Disempowering archetypes is the name that we give to a few kind of archetypal patterns of behavior that we all do as human beings, not just women, men as well, we all do them. And we often have a tendency towards one more than the other. But here at One of Many, there are four that we focus on that don't really serve us, right? Four that we focus on that don't really serve us. The first is Superwoman, and we're going to spend quite a bit of time talking about Superwoman at the One Woman Conference. Now, if you're new to our community, you might go, well, what's the problem with Superwoman? She gets everything done. She's amazing. You know, she's, you know, parties with her friends and, you know, uh, has a great family life and she's amazing at work and she's climbing the corporate ladder or she's building her own business or she's, you know, and she works out and she's fit and well, whatever. Yeah, she is. But she is living in this heightened, adrenalized state, doing so much all of the time that she's actually on path to burnout. And for many of us, she is the reason that we burned out. Back around the, uh, my 30th birthday, I uh, suffered from, uh, I was very close to, actually, I probably was, you know, I say I was close to burnout. Actually, I probably was burnt out, if I'm really honest with myself. Um, around my 30th birthday because I'd been in Superwoman too long. I had been um, training for a, a fabulous global organisation. You know, I'd be on stage in LA in front of 1,200 people one weekend. I remember the next weekend we flew to London. We did the same gig in front of 3,000 people at the Excel Centre. Um, two weekends after that I was in Sydney leading um, 150 people through a seven-day training, you know, it was glamorous, fabulous, all over the world, training, leading, transforming lives, doing what I loved. But holy fuck, I was exhausted, right? I was exhausted. I was going to a naturopath saying, you've got to give me something. I'm depleted of something. Help. The poor woman looked at me as if to say, whoa, lady, it's going to take more than some supplements, my love. And she was right. It did. You know, I got so far off centre of knowing what was good for me and right for me because I was in this state of superwoman. When we're in superwoman, we're disconnected from our truth. We're disconnected from our, um, our wisdom, our, our, our sacred women's wisdom. We're disconnected from our compassion and our unconditional love of ourselves and of others. We're disconnected from our, the source of our femininity, our sensuality and our sexuality. We're disconnected from um, we're disconnected from so many aspects of ourselves, from our from our queen energy, from our ability to see the vision and see the wood from the trees. We're disconnected from all of the good parts of ourselves when we're in superwoman, just trying to make it work, achieve, achieve, achieve. Right? Who can relate to that? How many of you have ever experienced superwoman? Give me a me. Write the words me in the comments if you have ever done it yourself or seen other people do it, like if you recognize it. Louise says, I was superwoman last year. I lived on cortisol all that time. I finally got a new role this year, and there is such a difference in how I feel. I feel great, and I'm connecting more with my soft power. Awesome, Louise. Well done. Good job. Mom is saying me. Yeah, loads of you say me. Deanne says me. Anne-Marie says me. Fiona says me. Yes, right? We all have done this before. Many of us have burnt out, or some of us have seen it on the horizon. Maybe you see it on the horizon right now because you're getting sick really easily. 
You know, every cold that passes you get, or you're just flat out exhausted when your period arrives during the month, you just can't get yourself out of bed or something. These are all little warning signs that you're in that cortisol, adrenalized, stress response state of superwoman. And she is one of our disempowering archetypes. Now, closely related to her are what we call her kind of wicked stepsisters or her cousins. Um, And they are a pattern of three disempowering archetypes that work together quite a bit. Um, and uh, it's sometimes called the drama triangle. We've, um, we've kind of slightly adapted it um, for our purposes. Uh, but the three disempowering archetypes that we talk about are the martyr. She is my poison of choice. When I get a little tired, when I get a little low, when I get a little, you know, off centre, you know, telling myself I'm okay when I'm actually not, I tend to get into martyr energy. And martyr energy is that sacrificial energy where we will put everybody else's needs before our own. Now, we martyrs like to think that is a noble thing, don't we? Where are my martyrs? Write the word martyr in the comment section if you know that you have a tendency to do martyr. We like to put everybody else's um, needs before our own and we think that it's good and noble and we should. And we women are exquisite at Marta because for generations, our mothers, grandmothers, great-grandmothers, great-great-great-grandmothers, great-great, going all the way back as far into the patriarchy as you want to go, were taught, put everybody else's needs ahead of your own. A good woman puts her husband's need ahead of her own, her children's needs ahead of her own. So culturally, we're told that's great, right? We always get the, the shittiest piece of fish. You know, the one that's fallen apart, the, you know, partner gets a great one, the kids get the other ones and we get the crappy one that's all fallen apart. You know what I mean, right? We do martyr. We do martyr. But it's not just that. It's also we, we, we'll, we, we're, we sacrifice our energy not just for our family, but we sacrifice it for neighbours that we don't know very well and actually who piss us off because they play loud music all the time. Or we sacrifice it for, you know, um, random people on the street who ask us, would they, would we like to give some time or energy to some cause that we're actually, no, we're, you know, stretched out, right? How many of you can relate to this? Give me a little thumbs up. Give me a little love heart. Let me know in the comment section if you know you do Marta. Now, the thing about Marta is we end up carrying around a, I'm swearing a lot today. Will you excuse me? I'm a little bit tired because I haven't, as I said, I'm going through some major transformation myself at the moment, not doing a lot of sleeping right now. And what happens when I don't sleep is I swear a lot more. So apologies for that. <laughs> but we martyrs, when we do martyr too long, we get resentful, don't we? <gasps> Bloody kids. Don't never grateful for what they get if we have children or work colleagues that can't see how we're doing that bit extra for them and they never say thank you. You know, how do you, oh God, or our bosses who won't, don't see just how hard we work and the fact that we sacrificed our five-year-old's birthday party so that we could be there, whatever, you know, we do this stuff, right? We do this. So this is Marta. We get very resentful. And then... Um, related to the resentment that can fuel from Marta, many of us go into bitch. I have to put my hand up. Actually, I've been much better at it over the last two weeks since I've had some major breakthroughs, which is great. But goodness gracious me, um, I have to say, you know, like I get really snarky when I'm not my best self. Right, when I've been doing Marta for too long, I'll get snarky, snappy. It's either passive aggression, like, oh, you're fine, right? Usually with my partner, we usually reserve this fabulous behavior for the people that are nearest and dearest to us, right? So my husband, Greg, gets to see that. Um, he hasn't seen it for quite a while, but, you know, I, I was doing it there for a bit. Um, uh, our kids, you know, uh, those those that, that are nearest and dearest, right? Nearest and dearest. Um, it might even be work colleagues where you do it. You know, there might be someone at work who just like, passive aggressive with or whatever but bitch comes out in this way she can either be overt shouty or she can be passive aggressive like fine yes I can do that no problem (laughs) my sisters used to take my sisters and I take the piss out of each other fine it's like how 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 tense can you make your neck and that's how much passive aggression you've got (laughs) 
<laughs> it's not that passive really, is it? But that's that bitchy energy that we do when we are full of anger, right? We're full of anger and resentment. How many of you know that you do that from time to time? You get not okay with the people around you. Give me a little bit of a me in the comments section. So no one seeing the stream back is going to know what you answered me to. <laughs> But what is it? We, you know, what, how many of you know you do that? I know I do it. We all do it because all of us are great some of the time and awful some of the time. And what we're talking about today is why sometimes we're awful, right? Why do we do this to the people that we love the most? Why do we do this, you know, to the people that we have to work with? Why do we do it? Well, that's what I'm going to come to next. So that's the bitch. She's very disempowering. Um, uh, the next is the victim. Now, victim is when we're like, oh, oh, it's too much. I can't do anything. It's not fair. I'm feeling really low and I couldn't even get into the GP. I couldn't get a couldn't get a doctor's appointment and it was too hard. And I tried to, I tried to get someone to take care of the kids, but no one could help me. And then I tried, just couldn't, I couldn't even get out of bed today. It was too much. And I, and it's all, and it's because, you know, it's because uh, I, 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 nothing has been the same. Nothing has been the same since, you know, my partner left me six years ago. I've been trying really hard, but that bastard, fuck, oh, it's too hard. I just, it's, I can't, this is, I don't know what I should do. I know I should, and my, my job, I can't stand my job. Everyone there is, is awful. My boss is terrible, but I can't leave because if I, right, we make excuse after. It's not excuse, by the way. This could be all absolutely valid. He could have been a bastard and it might have been since then that he left and you couldn't get an appointment at the GP surgery and no one could pick up your kids, right? All of it's true and valid, but there's a difference between, whoo, holy shit, I can't, nothing's gone my way today. What else can I try from a place of empowerment versus the victim who lets everything collapse on top of her? who feels like she is powerless in the world. She has no agency. She's trapped. She's alone. She feels like there's nothing, no, you know, she's, her, her action, she's not in control of her actions. It's not my fault I'm like this, right? It's his fault and her fault and the system's fault and somebody else's fault. How many of you have had a moment of victim at some point in the last 12 months? I've got two hands up and, and a leg as well. Hey, look, I've got shorts on today. It's so warm. <laughs> I, I, we've all done it. If you haven't, I'd be very, very surprised. In fact, not surprised. I'd be more inclined to believe that perhaps you're not particularly honest with yourself or otherwise you're spiritually enlightened, unlike me. In which case, great. Keep doing what you're doing and share it with the world, my love. But victim ain't so attractive to be around for you or for other people. And she's certainly um, is disempowered, right? She is powerless to affect any change because she's giving all of her power away. So can you see that you might go through all of these in a day, right? Especially if you spend a lot of time in superwoman, you might find yourself lapse into bitch, you know, at work and then lapse into martyr at home and then collapse at the end of the day into victim you know, crying into your pillow because you just really need something to change, but you don't know what to do about it. You don't know where to start. We can get into the cycle of it all. And then, you know, we can take our, um, uh, you know, we, if, if we have a bully at work, we might be in the victim at work because then they become interactive, right? We need, uh, we need a bully or a bitch at work to, and then we go into victim. And then maybe there's someone else at work who's in Marta who's trying to save you, right? Does this make sense, ladies? So they're all interactive. And it's a big old messy melee of disempowerment where you are giving your power and your agency away, right, to either situations, to your emotional state, or to beliefs about your worth, yeah? So I want you to be really honest with yourself today and I want to know what is your poison of choice? Which of those four do you know is the one that you tend to do the most? Let me know in the comments section which is yours. Mine is Marta. Mine is Marta. When I get, uh, oh God, I've got a bloody degree in martyrdom. Do you know? Mum, I know you have a degree in martyrdom because I learned a lot of it from you. Thank you very much. <laughs> but it's all good. You and I, we're healing it together right now. We're in, sister we're in sisterhood me and my mum healing our martyrdom. 
Um, but I do, you know, we, I prioritize. So that, that's, that's my poison of choice. So let me know your poison of choice. There is no shame in this, ladies. There is no shame in kind of admitting what it is to yourself because until we admit it to ourselves, we can't do anything about it, right? Or at least write it down on a piece of paper if you don't want to share the comment in the comments. <laughs> uh, Deb says, I'm 100% with you on swearing when I'm tired. And Rebecca's saying, I need, I love a bit of sweary, Joe. Just what I needed today. <laughs> uh, Callie says, it's too close to pick between superwoman and bitch. Yep. Mahala says, my mum is, super, is superwoman. Yeah, and sometimes when we have a mum who is superwoman, we might go, whoa, I'm not doing that. And we go into anti-superwoman, right? She's another one that we uh, sometimes talk about too. We talk about her more at conference. So um, if you recognize this, the first thing I'm going to say actually is if you are not yet registered for the One Woman Conference, do yourself a favor. It's only 127 pounds. Get yourself a ticket for this weekend. Give yourself a weekend of rest, replenishment, connection, deep dive, healing, and come and transform because that's what we're going to be doing this weekend. Get yourself a ticket at onewomanconference.co.uk. Get yourself registered and come join us. So here, let's understand a little bit more about why do we do this? How, how is it that we get into these? We go into these disempowering archetypes when we are triggered by something. Something happens and it's like um, it's, it's like a trigger, right? If you think of, about, a, about a light switch, you know, you switch the light and then a series of little, you know, um, chemical reactions. Is it a chemical reaction? Electrical current runs down the thing and then poof, the light comes on, Yeah. So that's the same as when we go into this disappearing archetype. There's a switch, something happens, and then there's a, a transmission that goes through and bang, we go into this disempowering archetype. Now, here's the thing. Between the trigger and the result of the archetype happening, it's usually something is occurring because sometimes, right, let me give you an example here. You can be unpacking your dishwasher, right? If you're blessed enough to have a dishwasher, I recognize the privilege inherent in that statement. Not everybody has a fucking dishwasher, but go with me here. And you drop a cup. Some days you can drop that cup and it's not a problem, right? There's no problem. You just get your broom and shovel, soup it up, whatever, we'll get another cup. But other days you drop that cup and it is like the end of the world, right? The, it's the same cup. It's got nothing to do with the cup. It's got everything to do with what that stirred up inside you. And when we get triggered or something, something happens out in the world that stirs up something that we're holding inside, we go into patterns of disempowerment. We go into victim, we go into bitch, we go into martyr. So, for instance, if you are carrying around a whole lot of resentment, right, a whole lot of resentment and anger because you are the, you are the one at home who does everything, right, that you don't have much in the way of domestic support, Maybe you've got kids and they don't help out. Maybe you've got flatmates and they don't help out, but you do all of that. So there's anger there, but it's not just that. It's also from when you lived at home with your family and you were told that you weren't allowed to be the way that you were, you know, don't, you know, don't raise your voice here, please. So you weren't allowed to be yourself. So you had to hold on to yourself. You got angry about that because you couldn't be yourself. And then it wasn't just at home, it was maybe at school, you know, where you, where you were told, do this, don't do that all of the time. And you get angry because you're an express little girl who wants to, you know, run and play and have fun. Don't do that. Urgh, I want to do that. Right. Right back to, I don't know where the angry started. Maybe it started when, when your mom said you have to go sleep in your own bed now to a little one-year-old and you got cross about that and you cried for three nights right? Three nights straight and they never came and got you. So you took all of that anger and it went inside, right? We, if you've been carrying around a shit ton of anger, and I tell you, most women are because it's the one emotion that we are told we are not allowed to feel because it's not nice little girls don't get angry, right? But we carry around bucket loads of this stuff. And then someone says something to us like, um, oh God, why don't you just smile for a minute? Can't you, can't you take a joke? And you want to punch them in the face? That's when we go into bitch 
it wasn't about them saying, why don't you just smile? It's about the 25, 40, 60 years of anger that you're carrying around inside of you. Let me know if this makes sense to you with a thumbs up, right? Let me know if this makes sense to you. You can see how this is working. Unexpressed emotion, unexpressed anger will turn and express itself as bitch or pa either passive aggressive or overtly aggressive. And women tend to do passive aggressive a lot more than shouty because that's what we're told in society that we're not allowed to express our anger. But yeah, so a bunch of you are saying absolutely you can relate to this. Thank you. So that's the bitch. By the way, ladies, if this is resonating for you, if you're hearing this going, oh, wow, this makes sense, and you know that you have a friend or a sister or a mum that could really use understanding this, by all means, in the comments section, if you write their name and tag them on Facebook, um, if you write their name, they'll see this video or share the video to your own Facebook page after this. Just say, met this crazy Australian woman today. This kind of made a sense. So I just thought you might be interested. Please share away because it will make a real difference, right? It'll make a real difference for somebody. So that's what triggers us into kind of bitch, right? What about martyr? Why do we do martyr? Martyr is, martyr is bedded in the belief that we are not good enough, that we are not worthy, that we are somehow bad, we have some kind of fatal flaw, that everybody else is better than us. And there's a lot of shame in there, right? There's a lot of shame in there. Whoo-wee. I've been living in a shame shitstorm over the last couple of weeks while I've been doing my inner work in preparation for conference this weekend. <laughs> I've been right down in there. So much shame. And it's not from, you know, it's usually, the, as a, again, it's not necessarily what you did last week. It's not what you did last month. It's from way back when, right? Tiny little girls make decisions about ourselves. You know, in my situation, Lo uh, love my dad to bits and pieces. My mum and dad got separated when I was about six or seven years old. And of course, a little six or seven year old girl, six year old, I think it was, um, doesn't, doesn't get that mum and dad aren't getting along. So they need to live in separate houses, right? What little six year old girl goes, oh, daddy is leaving me. Therefore I'm unlovable. I've done something wrong. I'm not worthy, right? So that's the decision that we make about ourselves. And that then fuels everything. Then, then we try really hard and we go, you know, I, I remember as a little girl, I started then to look after my sisters and make sure mum was all right and make sure everyone was all right. I remember when my mum first um, uh, got married to my stepfather, I remember, um, I, rem I vividly remember going down to his workshop and, and in, you know, making sure that he was okay that we'd moved into his house, Right just wanting to make sure that he was all right with it. You know, this is this kind of little martyr in training. What else do we need? And it comes from a deep sense of unworthiness, yeah, a deep sense of this. How many of you can relate to that, right? How, how, how many of you can relate to what I'm talking about here? Yeah, it looks like quite a few of you are, you are, uh, are um, giving me some thumbs up and love on that. Yes. <laughs> uh, oh, Nicolette says, it's been ages since I've seen you, Joe. Slipped so bad. Love you and so glad we're both here now. My darling, here we are. We can do this together. Absolutely. Jean says, I dropped my boss's mug at work, which shattered into a million pieces. I went into full-on victim, even though she was really nice about it. Well, this is it. Let's talk about victim, shall we? Because what, what gets us into victim? What gets us into victim is when we are usually, we're carrying around all of the emotions, all of them, often a lot of grief, a lot of hurt, right? Things have happened to us. We've been hurt. There's unexpressed grief. And then we just, we don't know what to do with it. So we, we turn it in. We start getting angry at, at ourselves because we're not functioning properly. We have like all limiting beliefs about ourselves. That, again, centered in unworthiness, not good enough. I, I can't, you know, I'm stupid. I don't have any friends. No one wants to play with me. You know, whatever those old beliefs are, can fuel this, right? Can fuel us into victim. And then if we've got if we've got this big ton of emotions and limiting beliefs that we're holding on to inside of ourselves, we drop the mug and we go, oh my God, I've let my boss down. Right? So we see person in authority, precious mug, bad person, unexpressed grief from ages ago, 
oh, I'm horrible, I'm a terrible person, and all of the feelings come out all at the same time. Does this make sense, ladies? So this is what triggers us. We, we have a trigger. It might be the dropped mug. It might be someone telling us to smile. It might be someone... Um, it might be a kid accidentally kicking us in the face when we're trying to get them dressed. Uh, it might be a work colleague just asking us if we could do this one thing. You know, it's never a big deal, whatever the thing is, but it can trigger us into these disempowering patterns of behavior. And here at What I Many, we've got many ways to, that we work with that. We have trigger tracking, which is a tool which helps you to see those patterns and, and, and when, when they happen. At conference this weekend, we're going to be doing some deeply transformational work because we won't be looking so much at the triggers that have you go into the disempowering archetypes, but the, the huge bundle of energy that you're carrying around from your past that's fueling them. Does that make sense, ladies? It's, and some of you might be hearing that going, oh my God, that sounds awful. What? But the beauty of the way that we do this work is that it is gentle compassionate, loving, and deeply transformational. You don't have to feel all of your anger to be able to let it go. You don't have to feel your shame or your belief about I'm not good enough to be able to let it go using the journey we're going to take you on this weekend at the One Woman Conference. You're absolutely going to love it. So if you know that that is the case for you, make sure you've got yourself that ticket, right? Because what, we, what we're going to do is a beautiful meditation well, first of all, we're going to go through all of it through the disempowering archetypes and our women's power types and then uh, and dig up all of the emotions that are problems for you, dig up the beliefs that are problems for you, set you up with some new distinctions in all areas of your life, wealth, career, health and vitality, um, uh, as well as our um, uh, love and relationships. We're going to have a look at the whole area and survey your entire life and really go into and let go of the biggest thing that's holding you stuck at the level that you are right now so that you can fully unleash as the empowered, confident, courageous woman that you know you can be in your heart. That's what it's all about, my darlings. So absolutely get yourself there at onewomanconference.co.uk is where you can get yourself a ticket. It's only £127 for two days of transformation. Oh, and exciting, exciting. I can now announce um, our beautiful guest panel. We've got a lovely guest panel that are joining us. Some, one of them you've met on a Lunch and Learn Live if you follow me every Tuesday here a couple of weeks ago, uh, Christina Mandlachiani. Um, Christina is one of the co-founders of Mind Valley, and many of you will know Mind Valley because it is, I, I think, one of, if not the biggest kind of uh, personal development and spiritual growth platform, a global school, um, which it has grown exponentially since 2009. Many of you are probably Mind Valley members. So Christina, who's one of the co-founders, is going to be one of our guest panelists. She started her career uh, working for the government in Estonia. Um, and then joined the nonprofit sector, working for organisations like the United Nations and Oxfam, and so on. And then founded, co-founded Mind Valley in 2003, and it's grown absolutely extraordinarily over that period of time. She's the face of Mind Valley in the Russian market, and her whole thing, her whole kind of bag, is helping us to understand and live with more happiness in our lives. So she's one of our panelists. In fact, she's been named one of the top ten influential people online making a difference in the world today. So she is going to be awesome. And coincidentally, I also was connected with an extraordinary lady called Vina Sidhu recently. And we got on the phone together and we, God, we clicked. She's incredible. Now, Vina has over 15 years experience in the publishing, education and marketing industries. She was actually, and I met these two ladies completely individually, but she was a senior partner at Mind Valley during that explosive growth because she became, was the CEO of the Mind Valley affiliate network, uh, which was called Mind Valley Engage, and then took on the role of director of sales and publishing and became a senior partner. Part of that exponential growth, and she did it all through collaborations, partnerships, and exquisite approach to actually getting shit done, right? She's extraordinary. She now works as kind of a virtual chief of operations for companies doing in the sort of five to seven million range, wanting to scale higher than that. A lot of systems and processes stuff. But the reason that I've um, invited these two ladies to come together on the panel is they are also great friends. 
So I met them individually, but they're also great friends and they were both involved in this huge growth. And as I was chatting to each of them individually, their perspectives on collaboration, on the importance of women in this new phase of, um, of growth and of rising up uh, was so extraordinary. I just thought, I want to have a panel where it's like girlfriends chatting together over the, you know, o- over past and shared experiences, you know, of our challenges, where we were stuck, how we broke through those challenges and what sorts of, um, what sort of distinctions we made that we can all learn from. Because most of us are very individualistic in our approach to life. We think we have to do it all by ourselves. But these two women have demonstrated so superbly what the power of team and collaboration and working together can actually do, which is going to be critical for this new chapter that we're trying to author in our human history, right? Um, The theme of uh, One Woman Conference is all about rising up. So we're going to have a really lovely um, uh, panel on Sunday morning of the One Woman Conference, which I think you're going to love. How does that sound, ladies? You're looking forward to that? Yay! So not only are we having a massively transformational weekend, you're going to meet some amazing guest speakers. You're going to meet all of the one of many trainers, Stephanie Aitken, Annie Stoker, our head of coaching, Susie Heath, the godmother of one of many and the divine embodiment of uh, femininity as far as I'm concerned. The lovely Sarah Price is going to be there as well. It's going to be a magical uh, weekend and it is going to be deeply transformational for you. Very gentle. And you're going to be able to network and connect with women from all over the world. I know, it's going to be so exciting. Aisha says, I'm so excited. I know it's going to make me feel alive again. Yes, and that's it. I think if you're sitting there kind of feeling switched off and numb, get yourself to the conference because that numbness is because you are full up with emotion and tuned out from what's going on inside, right? If you want to to feel alive, juicy, great, connected, meet some new people that will support you in your next phase of growth, we are, you're going to be able to do that. Over the course of the weekend, we're going to have like, I don't know, eight different opportunities to have lovely, big, long, juicy breakout sessions with women. So you're going to meet small groups of women and connect with new people all over. It's going to be fabulous. You're going to love it. Absolutely love it. So once again, it's at onewomanconference.co.uk. You can grab yourself a ticket. And if you are doing any of these disempowering patterns of behavior, you will transform those this weekend. You can fully expect that by the end of the weekend, you will have disengaged the key thing that is driving some of these disempowering behaviors that you're experiencing. It is going to be transformational for you. So I really look forward to seeing you there. Ladies, it's been fabulous sharing some time with you today. If this has been helpful, please share it with your friends. If you know a woman who should be at the One Woman Conference, tell her about it. I promise you, if you have a friend with a birthday coming up, if you have someone that you care about, tell them about it. It will change their lives and they will be grateful to you for the rest of their lives. They don't have to leave home. They can do it from home. This is the last time, I hope, that we will be doing conference virtually. After this, it will be back in person. It will be back in the room. Um, in next year's conference, we'll be back back together again, which is great because we'll actually get to see each other and hopefully hug each other by then. Um, but the downside is there'll be added costs of travel and, and um, accommodation and all of those sorts of things that you'll need to be thinking about. It might be harder for you. So if you know that you're, you know, you've got kids or you've got, um, it's difficult for you to travel, make sure you're coming this weekend. If there are people that you know should be there, make sure they should be there this weekend. Yay, yay, yay. <laughs> Aisha says, I've convinced my mom to join you for a retreat in person as soon as she can. Yay, fantastic. Linda's sharing with some of her friends. Wonderful. So please do take this video now, darlings. Share it to your Facebook page. Tell your friends about the conference. Come and do it yourself. Let's transform. And together, we women can actually author the new chapter of humanity, and not just humanity, of our whole world that we so desperately need, right? This is, we're desperately in need of compassion, of strength, of love, of commitment, and of vision right now. We have a dearth of these things in our world. And you, my love, are part of the solution. So please come and join us and let's make sure that we can co-author this together. See you on the weekend. Can't wait. Bye.